Hi everyone, and welcome to episode 15 of the By the Lakeside podcast. My name is Sandy, and this is a podcast about my knitting and sewing adventures that happen in my craft room here in my home, which is by the lake, just outside of Toronto in Canada. I have lots of making um, that I've been up to in the last few weeks that I'm really excited to fill you in on today. I think I have um, quite a bit of stuff to talk about. So uh, to start off, I will tell you where else you can find me. I am Sandy Ran on Instagram and Ravelry. I have an Etsy shop where I sell project bags and that is called Sandy by the Lakeside. And I think I think that's it actually. I do have a By the Lakeside podcast group on Ravelry, so if you'd like to check that out, you can just go to Ravelry and in the groups tab, you can click on that and do a search for By the Lakeside. Um, and if you do join, introduce yourself so that um, I can see who you are. Um, so lots has been going on around here. I am very excited that I am actually not working right now. I am home and I am spending the summer with the kids and really looking forward to uh, spending time with them and also doing a lot more in my room here, uh, in my craft room. It has been really, really nice to um, finally be able to spend more time doing things that I love. I was feeling in the last year or so that I was really stressed. Um, work really took a toll on me and my time and so this is actually a really good thing and I'm really happy to be home right now. So why don't I just jump in? I have a lot to talk about today. So first I have a half object. So I've been really busy. I actually cast this on um, after my last podcast and I've already finished one of my fin socks. So I was really excited to work on this project. It is coloring book yarns in the fin colorway. Um, and this was really uh, sweetly gifted to me by my friend Joanne um, from Fort Hardy on Instagram. I love self-striping yarns. I've talked about them a lot and I love Adventure Time. My boys love Adventure Time. I have two boys. Um, Camden is 13 and James is 11 and they have both really loved Adventure Time but right now James is into it and um, he loves Finn. So I was really excited to cast this on. Um, I do have it in my beautiful Adventure Time bag. Oh and James actually made me a little BMO to stick on there, so I love my little my little rainbow loom guy. He does a lot of those. Um, this project bag, I really like this bag. It's made really, really well, and it's, um, it's by Wool and Thimble on Etsy. Here is the yarn, so I'm going to cast on the next one. And the yarn is actually, um, let me just check that I gave you all the info. It's from Coloring Book Yarns. There's the band. Um, colorway is called Finn, and it's 80% um, superwash merino and 20% nylon. It is really nice to knit with. I'm using my favorite needles, which are the Knit Pro Zings. This is a 2.25 needle, uh, which is what I do all my socks on. And I cast on 64 stitches and just did a vanilla sock that I always do from Susan B. Anderson. And I decided to make James these socks. I was really excited because he's actually the same shoe size as me right now. So it made it really easy um, for size purposes to know uh, that it would fit him. So I'm really happy with it. I did the uh, traditional heel flap and I'm really happy with how the striping turned out on this one as well. So I have unwound just a little bit um, from the remaining yarn so that I can try to start at exactly the same color. I'm really gonna try um, to get this the same just because it looks really cool. So that is my half object, which I'm really excited about. And I don't think I've ever knit a sock this fast. Um, being home, I have just been able to really incorporate more knitting into my daily routine. So I wake up and I have a cup of coffee and I spend time knitting before I do anything for the day. Um, and I'm also 
not as burnt out in the evening so I'm finding that when I'm sitting with the family I can knit so much more whereas in the past when I would come home from work and be really stressed and tired um, I didn't even have the energy to do that so that is great I am spending a lot more time um, with my knitting uh, as well as doing a whole bunch of other stuff so it's great so um, that's I don't have any other finished objects I am going to move on to my whips and I'm really happy with all of my works in progress right now. Um, some of them you've seen um, and some of them are new. So I'm going to start with the ones that you've already seen. But I'm still really loving my beautiful um, gradient cowl from the Pearl Bee. I have added just a little bit more since last time. So this yellow is really um, adding such a beautiful pop to this. And I cannot wait to just get this done for fall. I'm hoping that um, in a couple months I will just slowly plug away at this seed stitch. It does take a while, but it's actually a really calming and soothing knit. So this is, um, this is one that sits with me uh, by the couch or my spot, so, or my spot by the couch. So it's beautiful. I've shown it before. I just wanted to give you a little peek at my progress. So I'm just working on this one whenever I can. And, um, just to let you know again, the yarn and the pattern is from the Pearl Bee, it's the Gradient Cowl, and I have used um, the Pearl Soho's line weight, the 100% merino wool, that is what it's going to look like, and um, I use the Grapefruit Kit, so the colorway is Grapefruit if you want to check that out. They have a great website with lots of free patterns and um, beautiful kits if you are interested. Um, another whip that I have is my Starting Point Shawl by um, Hohi Locatelli. And I haven't done that much more since last time, but I just also wanted to give you a little peek to see where I'm at. Um, I'm still on first clue. And I've added a few more uh, of the stripes, so I'm really happy with the colors. In this shawl so far I'm really like I, I don't think I would change any of them I just love them all like the the teacup from hedgehog I've been dying to use it and I'm really happy that it's really popping in this pattern um, and then this one here this Allegria um, this, I think it's a Manos del Uruguay Allegria is that right I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to check, and if I'm not right, I will put it up on the screen. Um, this one in here is the only one I wasn't sure about, but I'm really liking how it is sort of making all the other ones kind of pop, too, and it stands out. So, really happy with this. Um, it's a nice knit, but this one takes a little more concentration, so when I want to do, um, if I want to sit by myself and work on this, this is a great great one to kind of make a little bit of progress on here and there and I'm not really going to push myself too hard on this one. I think this is going to be my standby um, project because it's really big and it's going to take me a while but I'm just going to enjoy um, working on it a little bit here and there. So I'll probably um, just pull this out here and there to give you a little peek at how I'm doing um, but I, I have to do the same um, to do this ex exact same clue one a second time. If you've knit it, you know. Um, but basically every clue that you get in this pattern, you have to do it twice. So it's gonna be a lot of knitting, um, but I think it'll be a beautiful, um, beautiful project in the end. And this is my adorable Gnome Knitter Progress Keeper. It's a little Pop-Tart and I love it. I'm actually, um, I have quite a few progress keepers from the Gnome Knitter and I love them but I'm finding that I don't have very many um, stitch markers and so if you have any recommendations of some really cute stitch markers um, let me know I don't like them to be as big as the progress keepers because they kind of get in my way but I've been looking on Etsy and I actually don't know that many shops so if you have any stitch markers um, or recommendations for um, makers on Etsy that have them, please let me know because I am looking to get some more. 
Um, okay, so my next two whips are new cast-ons. Um, actually, no, this one isn't a new cast-on, but this one is in my, um, my own bag that was in my last shop update. So I really loved these octopus, uh, this octopus print, so I kept one for myself. Um, and I will be making a few more bags for another shop update, but I think it's going to take me a while, so I will keep you posted um, on the dates for that. But in this bag, I need to look at the pattern um, to remind me of who, whose pattern it is. So this is um, Sockhead Hat. It's the first one I've ever made, and... I really like it. So I cast on a little while ago with this beautiful yarn from a homespun house. And the colorway is called It's Okay to Be Alone. And I just love, um, I think it stood out to me at first because it was blue and um, it was just a really pretty blue. But all of the flecks of brown and there's sort of like a mustard, a mustard color in there. Um, are what really drew me to it. So there's even a little bit of olive. There's some beautiful colors in here and I thought it would make a really nice hat for one of the boys. Um, and as I'm seeing it knit up, I'm pretty sure it's going to suit James. So it's probably gonna be another item for James and then I'll have to catch up on some knitting for Camden. Um, it's on her soft sock base and the colors, it's okay to be alone. It's a 75% superwash merino 25% nylon. So Molly from Homespun House um, has some beautiful yarns you should check out. I think she just did um, an update too, so if you're looking for some. And here is my sock head hat. So I'm really happy with it so far. Now, there's one thing I'm a little concerned about with this is I had cast it on, I don't even remember when, I think I was just so excited to cast something on with the yarn because it was so beautiful. Um, and I put it away and I forgot about it and now it is um, kind of going with me here and there when I can sneak in a few rows. But I was double checking the pattern and uh, the socket hat is by Kelly McClure. I think it's a free pattern. Um, I'm not sure but I will um, put it on the screen for you to check out. So I got this on Ravelry. I've seen a few people make this before and it looks like a really great basic slouchy hat. Um, and it calls for fingering weight but using a 2.5 millimeter needle. And for some reason I thought, oh, I better just see what I'm using here. And I'm pretty sure, even though it's rubbed off, that this is a 3.25 millimeter. Now it's probably gonna be okay because I think I'm kind of, I'm not a tight knitter and I'm not really a loose knitter. I think I'm kind of average. Um, I'm hoping it's gonna be okay and that it's not gonna be too big. But James does have a fairly large head, so um, I think it'll be okay. But look at the way the, um, the colors are coming out so beautiful. Really, really love it. So I'm just still on the rib portion. I believe it's four inches of rib, so there's quite a bit. You can either um, uh, turn it back or leave it. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna be really cute. So this has been a fun, um, a fun little knit, and it really matches all the stuff on my wall there, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, so I'm really happy with this project. Um, I popped it in my new project bag and all of a sudden it's come back to life for me. So beautiful yarn, love the bag. I love the pattern, it's a no-brainer. It's kind of a potato chip knit, so I love those. I love having um, a lot of those types of knits to keep me interested and going when I'm tired and then having that um, starting point where it's not that complicated, but you do have to kind of make sure you're paying attention to your rows and your pattern a little bit more. So love the combination of knits that I have right now. So I did post on Instagram sort of an unfortunate uh, event that happened this week with my knitting. Um, my beautiful Camaro sweater had to be um, ripped out back to nothing. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I uh, didn't have the right number of stitches when it came time to separate for the sleeves. 
and I don't understand why because I think I understood the pattern correctly but as I thought about it I realized that I was knitting a lot on that sweater when I went into the hospital for uh, surgery and I have a feeling that in those few days before during and after that I must have completely lost track and I don't know what I did but I was I think 50 stitches or 54 stitches short so there was no fixing that and I couldn't really see where um, I messed it up so I just decided to um, rip it out and start again properly. Uh, I wasn't quite ready to start it again. I think it was just too soon, but I'm pretty sure I will in the, the near future because I love that sweater and I love the yarn and I am not letting that go to waste because it's beautiful. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna give it a couple weeks and then see. So in the meantime, I uh, wanted to try a new pattern and I've kind of been jumping around with, like I said, I'm home and I've been jumping around with so, like just buzzing with things that I want to do that it's almost a problem. I'm kind of jumping around and um, trying different things and I really wanted to try a Stephen West shawl. I think it was, um, they've been on my mind for a while. I've had them in my queue, um, but I think it was Annie from Knitting It Up. Uh, she started a dotted raise and I might have seen it somewhere else too, I'm not sure, but it just got it in my brain and I couldn't get it out. So I decided to order the, um, the Westknits, Westknits book. So this is the um, number one shawls and there were so many shawls in here that I knew I wanted to purchase the patterns for that I just thought this book, it's so beautiful that I thought, yeah, I'm just gonna get the book and see what I wanna do, and it still is the dotted race. So I decided on that one, I picked it out, printed the pattern out, um, and then I realized <laughs> that I didn't have two skeins of the same color yarn to do the dotted race. And I have just recently purchased so much yarn, and I thought, I am not buying more yarn right now. So I decided to try and hand dye some yarn. I had purchased all of the materials to do that back in the fall. I think it was kind of a birthday gift to myself that it was something I wanted to try and I just didn't get around to it. It was really busy and it's kind of a project that it takes, it takes quite a bit to kind of get started on it because you need a little bit of equipment, you need a space. Um, I do have a basement when we finished our a basement. I do have a kitchen in the basement. Um, we had finished our basement quite a few years ago and we put a base, uh, kitchen in the basement, which is not really typical and looking back I'm not quite sure um, if it was the smartest thing to do, but now that I want to dye yarn, it does seem pretty convenient. So I set myself up down there and I started playing with some dyes and I came out with two skeins of a color that I really liked. So this is, um, they're slightly, they're, they looked quite similar um, in the skein, but when I wound them up, this one does look a little bit lighter, but um, I think it was my second. I had done sort of a crazy mixture of colors for my first one, um, and then this was my second try, and I just thought, just go for it. Pick some of your favorite colors, and um, I'm really happy with it. I really enjoyed it. I don't know how I would recreate it because I didn't want to write anything down in my um, first experiments, but um, yeah, I'm looking forward to spending a little more time and seeing what I can come up with down there. Who knows? Um, just as a, an aside, these were I had tried one, um, so this is also my own. I had tried uh, a solid color, which I'm really happy with this. It's a really pretty purple, like a purple gray. And then a real experiment for me was this one. Uh, it's not really my typical kind of colors, but I think this might make a really nice sock head hat for my older son. I think this would suit his coloring really well and um, kind of into this goldeny kind of yellow right now. So I'm gonna see how that turns out on a, another sock head hat in the fall. So those were some of my experiments. Um, but back to the dotted rays. Um, I cast it on 
and I'm really happy with it. It's a really nice knit. I'm really enjoying this. I wasn't sure when I first started. It was my first Stephen West pattern. Um, but the, the colors are coming out nicely, and I'm, I'm enjoying the actual pattern, which I can't always say um, happens for me. I feel like there's certain pattern writers that really um, make sense, make more sense to me than others, and uh, I really enjoy Stephen West pattern, so I'm happy about that. And I'm really happy with um, the little dotted rays that are starting to appear. So I don't know if you can see some of the colors in the yarn. And um, yeah, that's it. It's small, but I'm making a little bit of progress here and there. And this is on, um, let's see here, a US 5 or 3.75 millimeter. And these are my new needles um, that I showed a little while ago. They are, I don't know if they're called Likey, I'm not too sure, but in this set, and I put, I brought these out because I actually wanted to talk about them later because they are uh, currently one of my absolute favorite things. They're my favorite knitting tool that I've bought in a long, long time. Um, I'm just loving them. They are amazing. I love the way that they, um, they kind of grip your yarn, but not too much so you can still slide it. I really just love wool needles, but they have a really nice, um, I don't know, I just love them. The joins are great, I have no problems with them, the cords are not, um, they don't get in my way. I really, really love this set, and um, anything new that I'm casting on, I have been uh, trying to get onto these needles because I'm really enjoying them. So, um, one of my favorite things are, are these interchangeable needles from Likey. I did have one problem with um, the 40 inch cord in here. One of the little um, screw ends doesn't quite go into any of the needles, but I think I am going to have no problem exchanging that, so all is good. So I didn't mention that my dotted race is in this beautiful zigzag stitches bag that I love. I purchased this from Espace Trico. I love this bag. It's one of the bigger um, box bags and it fits quite a bit like my there's tons of room in here. I could probably fit another skein so at least three skeins. Um, it's got a really pretty lining in there and I just loved this print. These are kind of my colors again and um, it's really really beautifully made and this is my second zigzag stitches bag and I love them. So I'm really happy with all of my projects. That's it for now. Um, I, I'm gonna try to work on those and make uh, some good progress on them and I'm excited to cast on a whole bunch of new stuff but I'm just gonna slow down and try to get through my second socks first. So I think next I am gonna talk about some new things that I have. Um, First thing was something I purchased quite a while ago and it just came this week. It is of course another scrumptious pearl yarn and this one is in the beautiful cake for breakfast colorway. I love it. It is um, on the Stellina base, so sparkle. It is 84% superwash merino and 16% gold Stellina, so that's a lot of gold. Actually you can see it. It's beautiful. I love these colors. I'm excited for this. I think I might actually save this um, for my birthday and cast it on as like a birthday cast on for myself. Cake for breakfast from Scrumptious Pearl. So I purchased that off of her Etsy shop. Um, I kind of wish I got the, um, the mini to do the heels, toes, and cuffs, but I might find something in my stash for that. That's something else. Stitch markers are, are one of the things that I am looking for. And also, um, I think I need to, because I've purchased so much sock yarn recently, and I feel pretty good with the yarn that I have in my stash, I think minis are, um, like some solid and tonal minis for socks would be really nice to add to my collection. So that's what I'm kind of um, 
kind of the only thing I'm looking for right now. So speaking of scrumptious pearl yarn, I have a friend um, on Instagram called Meg, and um, hi Meg. She recently started her own podcast, which is really great, and you should check it out. It is called Wool and Cookies, and in her um, podcast, she shares her beautiful knitting projects, beautiful yarn. She has fabulous taste in projects and yarn, so it's a treat to see what she's making. And um, she shares a cookie recipe, which I love because I do like to bake a little bit and I do love um, baked goods in the house. So I just thought it was a really sweet um, combination of knitting and cookies. It's really nice. So you should check out her podcast. But she contacted me because um, her local yarn shop, which is um, Wool and Honey in Michigan, they had an exclusive um, colorway of scrumptious pearl yarn that she thought I would love. So we did a little swap and she sent me this beautiful package this week. And I don't know if these colors are like totally by the lakeside colors. When I had my logo done, um, this color and sort of a combination of these was, was really the, um, the color story that was planned for me. Really my favorite colors. I'm so happy I got this yarn. It is Scrumptious Pearl um, in the Stripe Me Up 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon in the Wool and Honey colorway. Gorgeous. So, I mean, more sock yarn, yay. So thank you, Meg. And she was so sweet that she um, also included some other lovely treats. And I have to say they're all wonderful, but my favorite was some cookie recipes that she put handwritten on recipe cards, which I love because I'm a big, um, I'm not the best cook or um, cook fancy things all the time, but I do love um, recipes that are home cooking and kind of based on traditions or family. So I've collected recipes from my mom and put them on cards, my grandmother. Um, I love those traditional recipe tins. I actually, when I when I started getting uh, involved in the internet, I was actually on a food forum and had a food blog and just really love um, family cooking. It's something that is really close to my heart because I think uh, sitting around at the table every night with your family is really important and there are no excuses unless, um, you know, when the kids are older, if they have part-time jobs, but everyone sits together at the table for meals. And um, so I really love those recipe cards, Meg. Thank you so much. Um, she included this really cute pouch from Wool and Honey. And I guess that's one of their little pins on there too. And I love this kind of stuff. So beautiful. I'm a big pouch lover. Um, and then she gave me a really cute mini which I love and it's gonna go into my Cozy Memories blanket. Really pretty colors. Um, this is a deluxe mini from Bumblebee Acres Fiber Farm. Um, this one's called Rainbow Fish and it was a June special. So I'm assuming it was an exclusive June colorway. And my very first Woolberry Fiber Co. yarn. I'm so thrilled, what a super package so much fun to swap. So this is beautiful. This is a simple sock. The colorway is Painted Trillium and I have never um, used any of Woolberry Fibers yarns before so I'm really happy. Um, this is so beautiful. I don't even know. I think I might try to plan out a shawl for that for this colorway. It's so pretty. So thank you again Meg. That was really really sweet. I have another pretty awesome thing that came in the mail this week, or no, last week. My sweet friend Annie from Knitting It Up, she has a podcast and she has started dyeing yarn. Um, I had sent her uh, a bag a while ago and she returned the, the favor by sending me a beautiful skein of her hand dyed Knitting It Up yarn. The colorway is gorgeous. And it just blew me away. It's her Hampton base, but the colorway is called Sandy. <laughs> it's 
so, so sweet. I was so touched. Thank you so much, Annie. I think this is beautiful. It is really, really insanely soft. And um, then I looked at the content and I realized why. It is an 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. So, oh, these colors. I don't have a lot of sun in here, so I don't know if you're getting a really good representation, but it's this beautiful pale pink with a gorgeous kind of periwinkle kind of washed through. I love it. I can't wait to do something with that. And that would make a really nice shawl too because it's um, got the cashmere in it. It's really, really nice. Okay. So I feel very, very lucky with all of these um, beautiful packages that I have received. And I also did a swap with the lovely Tracy from Nora George Yarns. Um, and I received hers this week and I am just blown away by these colors. They're stunning. So I'm gonna show you one at a time. First one is called The Beekeeper. And oh my gosh. I, I just love yellow lately, um, and it's, I'm gonna move this a bit. I don't wanna take the band off, but you can just see these beautiful colors, just that little bit of speckling. Tracy's yarns are just stunning, and this one is no exception. So it's the Beekeeper in a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And then Castle on the Hill. So this one, I really love too. It's got a little bit of green and some beautiful purples. Gorgeous. So again, this is uh, same base, Superwash Merino and uh, nylon, 75-25, Castle on the Hill. I think this is really, really pretty. And I love, um, I love your, your logo. So pretty, Tracy. So thank you so much, and she sweetly um, added in some cute little extras for me, which I really appreciated. Um, some little treats, and um, oh, this really cool. I've been wanting one of these, actually. It is the um, Ann Bud Knits kind of gauge ruler with the stitches on there. Really, really nice, I like this. It's um, clear, so you can put it over your, um, over your knitting to, to see the stitches and um, one of these awesome little row counters, which I love. I love that color too. So thank you, Tracy. It's so much fun to swap with everyone. Um, let's see. The only other thing that I have purchased other than my um, West Knits book was this beautiful stack of um, Halloween themed cotton and steel fabric and I have a bit of this fabric and this fabric from last year and I don't know if you remember but I did some project bags and they were some of my favorites I loved this whole um, grouping of fabrics from cotton and steel I absolutely love them this one is one of my favorites now too um, and I was watching Laura from the Fawn Knits and she had mentioned that she was doing um, a Halloween quilt inspired by Sarah from the Love Sock Wool podcast, which I also did see that podcast and I did feel a little inspired um, by her too, but I had forgotten about it. And then I saw the fabrics on Laura's podcast and I thought, wait, I had this quilting bug that I really wanted to do, um, like a lap quilt for our family room and I was like, oh my gosh, this would be so much fun to do a quilt. Halloween themed, which I would keep out year round because I think these fabrics are so much fun. They're beautiful. So I picked up um, a fat quarter set. I think it's all of the patterns from this grouping. Um, and I still need to pick out a quilt. I haven't found one yet. But I kind of want one that has the um, the plus signs in it because I kind of feel like that would be a cool um, a cool pattern 
for some of these. I'm not sure yet, but I'm still on the hunt for a good pattern for that. If you have any and you want to suggest them, that would be great. So that is the only other thing I think I've purchased. But one of the other things that I um, started working on this week was an embroidery sampler and I had put a picture of it on Instagram and I got a lot of questions about where I got it. Um, so I wanted to share it on the podcast too because I think you might be interested. So this is the embroidery sampler. I um, picked this up because I subscribe to um, Creative Bug. It's very similar to Craftsy, but um, a little bit different. I kind of, I like them for very different reasons. I like Craftsy for very specific classes, um, but I really like Creative Bug because there are a lot of instructors that I'm familiar with from quilting um, and knitting. And um, I came across uh, such a variety of things on Creative Bug that really inspired me to want to do different things. So there were some journaling classes, um, like art journaling, there is um, embroidery, there's quilting, there are knitting and sewing garments. Um, so you, you pay monthly, but it's very, very uh, minimal, the fee, I forget what it is. And you can just access anything on the entire site, um, which is fantastic. So if I don't know what I feel like doing, I can go there for a bit of inspiration. And this was one of the ones that kind of uh, drew me in a long time ago. I saw this embroidery, I think it's an embroidery 101 class with Rebecca Rehnquist, who is a fantastic artist. Um, if anything, you should go check out the Creative Bug website and click on some of the instructors and look at the videos that they show about them. Um, I find it really inspiring to see what people are doing, where they're making, uh, you know, different parts of the country. And um, Rebecca Rehnquist is a really interesting lady. You should check out her. Um, I just found like her art form really spoke to me and the fact that she, um, she did her thesis, I think, on hand stitching, which was pretty amazing. So she has a class there and she also has an Etsy shop where you can get these samplers. So I picked this up. Um, I think it might be called the Drop Cloth Shop and it, this is called the Original Drop Cloth Sampler and she has quite a few. I'll put the, um, the link to her shop on the screen. Um, so she has an actual class where she'll show you, she'll go through, you know, the tools you need. Um, and some of the stitches and I just I thought it was really interesting this is not something that I ever wanted to pick up before even after I bought it just because it's a really slow process kind of craft to me I am you know primarily a sewer and sewing I find is fast for me I'm you know like it's in the machine it's you can do things really really quickly and see quick results this is a really um, mindful, slow process. There's even a part in her class where um, when she splits the embroidery thread, I thought it was really, really interesting. So usually in these, these embroidery flosses that you buy, um, it's a six strand and she you know, shows you how to split them and then um, separate them. And she even mentions, you know, like, the process of separating them should be uh, an introduction to getting used to the slow process of embroidery and just doing it really, really slow because it is something that takes, like you really need to be calm. I find you have to be calm. You have to be, um, there's no rush in this. Like there is just no rushing it. You need to have time to do embroidery. So I set myself up with a little tray I've got a little pin cushion. I've got some sharp scissors. I had picked up um, some of these just from a like a big box kind of craft store. I just picked a handful of colors that I really liked. And I had this pearl cotton from um, a visit to the workroom. Oops, some threads here. Um, a visit to the workroom many, many years ago. I picked up these two beautiful pearl cotton um, 
flosses. So I've got my needles in here, uh, all the stuff that she recommends that you start with. And I just kind of sat on the couch one morning and, and tried a few. I had done a little bit of this at the Buku studio uh, when I went for a workshop and I did really like it. It's just, it takes time and um, I think it's just one of those things get you get started and then you're, you're rolling. So I thought this would be really nice to have um, through the summer and here and there I'm just going to add um, some embroidery stitches to my sampler and eventually I'd like to find a really beautiful, maybe even antique frame and put it in a frame and hang it up in here somewhere. So that is just one of the things that I have been working on this last week. Um, I would like to get some work on my quilt and uh, keep going on that and the knitting. So there's tons and tons of stuff that is keeping me um, making things right now. So I think, um, I think the only thing that's left is I wanted to share a couple more of my favorite things. Um, I've mentioned before um, that I really love like planner supplies. I'm actually not a huge, um, I'm not huge into planning like in the actual planner, but I love planners to keep me organized. And then I love journals and art journaling. So um, I just wanted to share that I am really loving my get to work book, especially because um, I'm home now and you don't, it's quite big. And so I don't have to carry it around. But this is, um, a really great planner for goal setting. Um, if you are uh, working on a small business or you have projects that you're working on at home, like if you're decorating your home or you're in a new home or anything like that, I find it really, um, really great to keep track of things because I'll show you a, a week. So you've got, you know, areas here where you can put some things that you're, um, Things that you want to action, you can kind of put them in here. Um, you've got a space at the bottom to keep notes. You've got three tasks per day that if you, um, I really like to kind of set, set up. I don't do it every day, but if there are three key things I really want to make happen, I put them there sort of as my priorities. And then you've got your day and you've got your months. And I, I just really like this book. It's, um, I don't decorate it. I do have like some, some really cool um, stamps that I'll sometimes use that are um, from Clearly Clearly Kelly, from Kelly Perky. Um, and they're just kind of like, I think I've shown them before, but there's a stamp set for like housework. So if you want to put in what days you're doing laundry and things like that. Um, I haven't even really done it in here yet. I've kept it pretty simple, but I just, I really like it to jot down Goals. So I wanted to mention that because I had talked about planner stuff and um, I just wanted to let you know that I love this book. It's fantastic if you like goal keeping and keeping notes on staying organized. So in addition to that, I have mentioned that I have purchased some really beautiful things. Um, they're kind of pricey things and I had purchased them when I was still working. So um, they were they were quite um, the treat. But I had shown this on Instagram and it is one of my most coveted stationary items. It is from the Superior Labor Company. I think that's the company's name. And it's a leather pen roll. And because I do like um, kind of art journaling and drawing, I, I like to have this with me so that if the urge strikes me and it's not, you know, I don't have all my art supplies around, um, I can just pull this out and get something onto paper and yeah it's the superior labor superior labor company it's made in japan it's beautifully made it's even got this squeak and amazing smell and i just wanted to show it because i like to keep my fountain pens in here for journaling and some of my drawing pens and little stencils and things like that so i know a lot of you have mentioned that you are into the planner supplies or things like that I thought I would share and I did get a new leather cover um, similar to the Midori Traveler's Notebook that I have shown in the past but this one is by um, Rowena from Sojourner and she does these beautiful leather covers 
for your um, journals. And this is not a planner. This this one here is um, it's got the secretary pocket here, and it's a beautiful. Um, which one is this? This is a. Stalogy notebook. Uh, this is a B6 and it's got really great paper. So this is the book that I have decided I am going to um, keep around with my pen, my pen roll and um, start journaling a little bit more and drawing because it's something I love to do. And if I don't keep these things near me, I will never find the time to do it. It's just I don't know. It's just one of those things that I need to really um, have it in my face to remind me. Um, speaking of all of these stationery and art supply type things, I wanted to show... I'm a little torn with this because this is really hard to find, but I wanted to show it in case um, you are somewhere where you can find it on Amazon or maybe you see it in um, a specialty shop near you. I don't know. It ended up costing me way too much money because I ordered it from um, Australia, from a company called Noteworthy, and so I paid a ridiculous amount of shipping, and then I was hit with a crazy duty and handling fee when it got here, so I wasn't really happy with that, but I love what it is. So it is this huge pouch. Um, it's called a utility pouch, and the company is Delphonics can see here and it's it's kind of a, a really nice canvas this one's in like a railroad denim stripe and I just love it I love pouches of any kind which I think is why I love um, knitting project bags but pouches pencil cases um, any like I have another pouch I want to show you too but this thing is so big it fits so much stuff. So I have some of my favorite art supplies and pens in here. Um, my washi tapes. Um, just, you know, like little note cards and things that I want to um, maybe add into my journal. Just like essentials that I can take on the couch, sit with me um, like on my, the side table by my couch and I can work on my journal. I put a really cute pin on there that I got on Etsy. Um, so I loved it. I just wanted to show it to you. It's really hard to find, but maybe they will be more readily available at some point. There's tons of pouches you can put pens in. Um, but I know a lot of us love this kind of stuff, so I wanted to share it with you. And if you do spot one, there's a beautiful mustard one that I would love to get my hands on, but it's near impossible to find. Speaking of pouches, I have one more favorite thing um, along this line, and it's not for um, art supplies, it's just kind of random. And it's leather again, but it is this beautiful large um, pouch by Bagu. And I think I ordered this directly from them in um, on the web. I think they're in California, I'm not sure. They're also available on the Pearl, um, the Pearl Bee or the Pearl Soho website. But I just, I find I have so much little, so many little things that um, I love compartmentalizing and organizing. So this one um, kind of has like chargers and my headphones and my USB stick, things like that. So I kind of keep it as my little computer catch-all and um, I love it. It's just really, really soft. It would be great for knitting if you were traveling and wanted to bring your knitting with you too. Um, and I love purple, so I wanted to show you that pouch. So it's a flat pouch, but it's so big that um, you can kind of get a, an idea here. It's like you could actually fit the whole book in there. It's really big. So love that. Um, I wanted to share one other random favorite that you might be interested in as knitters. I've talked about dry hands before and I am um, a huge lover of this hand cream. So um, it's by Asa. It is so calming and um, it's called the Resurrection Aromatique Hand Balm. 
and this one is in um, the scent or the yeah the scent is mandarin rind rosemary leaf and cedar atlas and it has the most calming but also um, that little bit of mandarin in there it's just really fresh with the citrus but also very aromather aromatherapeutic so I wanted to mention that because um, I always love having a hand cream either in my knitting bag or near where I knit so um, this one is fantastic I got this at Nordstrom um, I think Holt Renfrew also has it and then I think there are also Aesop shops and they have um, they have such a beautiful range of hand soaps too. Um, I think the next time I see this, I might actually purchase the hand soap for my bathroom. And my very last favorite thing I have to share, um, I, in my first week or two home, I was sewing and ironing and knitting so much that I hurt my wrist so badly. I could barely move it and it was really scary because I thought, oh my gosh, like if this is, you know, how I'm going to be spending a lot of my time, I can't have this. I just cannot have it. And then I was watching um, Amy from The Little Taylor S, and she was talking about having some hand and wrist pain as well. And she mentioned that she got some gloves. So I looked into it and I picked up these Crafters Comfort Gloves. I found them on Amazon and they are a godsend they really really help they're they're kind of tight and they just kind of keep your wrist kind of like having a tensor bandage on it but not that tight um, and it says that it's good to use for arthritis hand pain and swelling or if you have cold hands now, I don't normally have cold hands but I thought if I am on a rampage with um, with ironing and making bag, you know, sewing and ironing when I'm making my bags for my shop, then I think I'm going to try to put this on to kind of alleviate some of the strain on my wrist because I feel like it could be a problem in the future. So that was another favorite thing, which I found um, really helpful and I'm enjoying. So thank you, Amy, for uh, mentioning that. I'm sorry that your hand hurt too, but I'm glad I found um, a remedy of some kind. So I think just to finish off, I wanted to share a couple of my um, favorite new podcasts because being home, I was finally able to catch up on a lot more uh, of the, the podcasts that I love. Um, and also I found uh, one or two more. So I wanted to share those with you because I miss sharing them. I think it's fun to share um, when you discover someone new. They may not, may not be new to you but they're new to me. So Meg that I mentioned earlier, um, her podcast was fantastic and I wanted to recommend the Wool and Cookies podcast, which I will um, put up here on the screen for you. Uh, I think I mentioned it already, but I think you'll really enjoy her projects and the yarn that she chooses and um, she's just lovely to watch. So I wanted to recommend that. And the second podcast that I discovered this week, I don't know where I have been. I guess I had my head down. I don't know. Um, it is the Wool Needles Hands podcast. And um, the host of that is Taylor. And she has also a fab, um, fabric. She has a, a yarn, a hand dyed yarn company that I also knew nothing about called Fiber for the People, which is beautiful. I have been really enjoying just putting on her podcast. I've been catching up on them while I'm working in my art room here. Um, I've been doing a lot of sewing and so I can have a podcast on in the background and it's really, really nice. I have been loving um, just all the info that she shares. It's a little different. She shares a little more, um, you know, different categories of things which I find really interesting and um, she just shares a lot of her, um, her kind of, you know, beginnings to her company and how she got started. And I love her vlogs. They're really fantastic. So if you haven't seen her um, podcast or her vlogs, you should check them out. I think she's um, a really great one to watch too. So I think that covers everything. I am going to leave you guys. I think this one has been a little bit long for me. 
I had a lot to share and um, I'm really excited. I am working on a whole lot more um, project bags that will be um, popping up here and there. I will keep you posted. Um, I'll probably do another podcast before I do my shop update because I also have a one year anniversary coming up and I'd like to do a giveaway. Um, I have to figure that out a little bit what I want to um, what I want to do for that but I will be back probably soon to do um, another podcast and a shop update and I'm looking forward to catching up with you a lot more this summer. So I hope you're having a wonderful summer so far and that you have lots of time to um, to do all the things that you love and spend time with your family. So I will see you next time. Bye.